In this video, we want to make multiple actors and have them communicate with one another. We finished off the last video. We had our system with one actor, and I showed that the program doesn't really stop, but the shutdown method, which is how you used to cause uh, systems to stop, has now been dep deprecated. Instead, we should use the terminate method. When we run this, things print and then our application stops. Now I want to I'm going to write a new app and this one will be called uh, Actor Countdown. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make two actors and we're just going to have them talk back and forth to one another and do a countdown. I actually don't feel like rewriting a lot of that code, so let's go ahead and let's copy some of the code that we had before. We'll have to import things. We want the stuff from Akka. Okay, we're not going to make a simple actor though. We're going to make a countdown actor, and it's not going to receive these messages. We'll go down and change that in just a bit. General rule of thumb when you're doing actors is that you should probably never receive messages of things like string and int. Never use the built-in types, mainly because they're not that informative. The type doesn't tell you anything about what's going on. Instead, you should probably define case classes for the messages that you want. So I'm going to make one case class called start counting. And when I start counting, I'm going to have two values in here. One is the value that you are supposed to start counting from. And then the other is a reference to the actor that you're going to be counting with. Okay? We talked about the fact that last time that when you make actors, what you get back is actually an actor ref and not an actual actor. So that's one of the messages. Then I also want to have a simpler message that just says countdown that we pass an integer value into and it'll just count down from there. So our receive is no longer going to take strings. It's going to take one of these two messages. I mentioned previously that one of the advantages of case classes is that they have pattern matching. So we can match on that pattern as such. And when I tell an actor to start counting, what it's going to do is it's going to print the value that was passed into it. And then it's going to send a message to the other actor and tell that other actor to do a countdown but from one less. Our other message we can pass down, or we can pass in, is a countdown message. And when we get that, one of two things will happen. So if n is greater than zero, well then we're going to basically print and count down. So we will print line n, but now we need to send a message back to whoever sent us this message. And for that, all actors have a method defined in them called sender. And we can send a message back to the sender that is a countdown of n minus 1. And so these will go back and forth and back and forth. If we get down to 0, I want to stop. And I want to stop not only these actors. In this application, I want to stop everything. That means that I need to call the system terminate. But I can't actually get access to the system here, or I shouldn't. It's been defined down here. In general, I won't have direct access to it. But all actors have a context. And that context knows about the system. And then we can call terminate on the system. OK. So our countdown actor, if we tell it to start counting, we tell it the numeric value, 
and the other actor to, to count with. And then when it gets a countdown, it either prints and sends a message back or it terminates the system. We no longer have a simple actor here. We have instead a countdown actor and we can call this one countdown one. And I'm going to call this actor one. We'll copy that line, we'll paste it, and we'll make a second one. And then I want to send the first actor a message to start counting from 10 and to do this along with actor 2. We run this and the output is what we would hope for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it would be nice to verify that these things are going back and forth I and mean, I could have just written a for loop that would have printed that out. I didn't have to have an actor system in order to do this. Uh, so how about for the countdowns, we're also going to uh, do a print line of, now if I do a print line of this, the this is a keyword in Scala that always refers to the current object, but that's the actual actor. And a lot of times we don't want to refer to our actors as the this, Akka has a method called self that we can use to refer to the actor ref for this actor. So it's interesting to see what that will do. And you can see here 10 is then followed by countdown 2, 9 is, uh, and it's countdown 2 that prints out 9, and countdown 1 prints out 8, 1, 2, 1, 2, they alternate back and forth. We'll come back and talk about the meaning of exactly what this string is saying in a later video. But this has set up basically the idea of how actors can communicate back and forth and then how we can use that communication to potentially stop the entire system when the work that we're doing has been completed.